Hey guys, I'm back after a long layoff. I'm still, I'm really bummed out about the Age of Sigmar stuff. Uh, so I've been really delaying making these reports because I, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, I, I, obviously I think it's terrible, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, this is game two of Audios 8th edition. <laughs> uh, this is going to be Orson Goblins vs. Empire, and I've lost the army list from my opponent. I'll try to tell you what I can remember with him having. Um, and this will be a meeting engagement. Okay, so if I'm looking for his setup, I can't remember all the magic items. His general is the Arc Lector on a War Altar. He's got a Battle Standard on a Pegasus. I think he has two other Carrot Captains on Pegasus as well. And then he has a, I think a Wizard Lord of Light, two level ones of Light, and a Master Engineer. He might not have the Wizard Lord. It might be three level ones. I'm not sure. And then he's got a giant unit of halberds, an attachment of halberds, and a big unit of like 20 crossbows, two hell blasters, a uh, steam tank, and I think he has another tank, some, another cannon somewhere, because I remember him having two cannons. Um, yeah, this is pretty much it, and this is meet engagement. You can see from his deployment, he's back towards the corner. In HTC, there's no reason for me to come at him, there's no reason for him to come at me. There's no reason for me to march towards two machine guns, and two cannons, and a bunch of crossbows and light magic. You can already tell <laughs> this is probably going to be a non-game. So here's my deployment, and, and he won the role to choose sides, and he had to deploy his whole army first, which meant I deployed second. And when I saw his deployment, I knew, I mean, no matter where I deployed, it took me at least two turns to get to him. You know, most likely. Five by six chance he's gonna get first turn. That's two turns of machine guns and cannons and magic into my savages. Because that's all I have is my savages. That's all I have to fight. Because under, again, under these T two rules, these two rules, I can't have my troll horde. So I think if I had my trolls and the savages, I would have went on at him, and he couldn't. Would think he couldn't take out both of them before I could get to him. But here, he only has one target really. I'll come on my other than my um, Ravern Lord, and you know he only really needs one cannon to destroy that. So. I have no reason to come at him, and I hate it. I'm sure, I know he hates it. I could tell during this game he hates it. This is going to be a non-game. I hate this going to be a non-game, but I have no reason to go get shot up by machine guns. And so he does win the first turn, cause unless you, I think unless I roll a six or something, he gets the first turn. So basically his shooting in the first turn only really gets accomplished as two wounds on this chariot. I had this chariot too close to to get shot at. I shouldn't have really done that. I mean, I was really, I don't know. I mean, this is as close as I could get. You can see these wolf riders, how long it was going to take them to get there. Think about my infantry. Because this is dangerous terrain in the center here, this on ruins. And so if I march out of that with my savages, I was going to have to take damage, I think, on ones or twos. Anywhere else I put them, there was really nowhere else to put them where I could get to his halberds. It was going to take at least two turns, assuming he doesn't move backwards. Which I would assume he would. So, yeah. Okay, in my first turn, I have a much better time of it with my magic and shooting. I think it's during magic here that I put um, two wounds on his Arc Lector with my Foot of Gork. And then I have a Rock Lava Land right on his Battle Standard Bear and kill it. And that panics a Master Engineer, which you can see in the background there, that's fleeing off the table. Oh, and there's his other cannon. I think that's his other cannon back there. Okay, this is his turn two. I should also mention I didn't have a picture of it, but my second rock lava after I destroyed Battle Standard destroys his um, war altar. So that was almost the worst thing because he still has a wound left on his general, and so his his turn he marches his um, halberds up and then he moves his general into the unit. So, I mean, he's got two two wounds on that general that I can't do nothing about it now. And under ETC rules, I get no points for this at all. I don't get half points like I would under most of the tournaments. And so now he's moving his things up because he's realizing that um, after my first turn, I wasn't just going to march towards him. Um, so now he's trying to get his guys up to me, and he's moving his hell blasters and stuff because they only have a 24-inch range. I think I was 30-some uh, inches away at least. So he was going to have a hard time shooting me with his Hellblasters. So in my turn two, I moved these Night Goblins up 
to try to put fanatics into that Pegasus and it does not make it. You can also see Wolf Riders up there who failed out of Monster and were forced to charge the steam tank. What were they thinking? Uh, uh, my shooting was not as good this turn. I think I do take out his other Pegasus. It's either this turn or the next turn with a Doom Diver. Okay, his turn three, he destroys both my Manglers and the Wolf Riders. He might have gotten both full units of Wolf Riders with his shooting. So, I mean, that was a mistake on my part because I'm just giving him points. When I, you know, I was, I'm giving him chat points where I was had them up there trying to slow things down, but I shouldn't even, even worry about that. I had like just kind of vain hope that my Manglers would do something. I shouldn't have had them up there at all. I should have did like one of my chariots and had them push back to try to counter charge later on. So my turn three and my Dike Ovens think, oh, well, can we can take a Pegasus Captain by himself. As you can see, as a complete fail, they run. I don't think he pursues, actually. I think he just wants to try to go for the um, War Machine. So they are fleeing. And it looks like I've killed some of my own savages with miscast, just trying to put um, Air We Go up or something like that. Because he's getting close enough to where, hopefully, within my next turn, if he moves up again, I can charge. So it looks like I'm missing a picture here. This is should be top of five. Basically, in his fourth turn, he miscast. This one is the one where everybody takes strength six hit on his wizards. So his both his level ones have a wound, and I, I'm pretty sure he's a level four who has a wound. And now this time he's going to miscast again, and I think it's everybody in base contact, which includes his arc lector. So if I could just get that arc lector dead, but he passes the ward save on his arc lector, so. Now is the point where I'm not getting any points for the water. I'm not getting the points for his half, below half strength in general. Uh, I think his wizard lord has. I think pretty sure again he has a wizard lord has two wounds, and both his level ones have one wound. I'm getting zero points for any of that under ETC rules. Extremely frustrating. Otherwise, his um, remaining captain on Pegasus is starting to take out my war machines and get behind my lines, and I'm gonna have to try to counter that. So then in his turn 5, it's going to look like this. His captain has overran into my Doom Diver. I have things already turned around, so on my turn, I can charge that captain. But he's destroyed three of my War Machines already. And uh, looks like the other Night Goblins have run off the table. <laughs> so right now, it's this real touch and go. This is basically in draw territory. Okay, um, I do charge everything. At th I do charge at the captain of Pegasus. It's um, going to lose, but it's going to, I guess, going to get away from my Ravern Lord. I think it also destroys my Doom Diver before I can strike. And also, you know, he's not moving up anymore. If I move at all, I'm going to be in range of his Hell Blasters, which, again, there's no need for me to do that. And at this point, I'm not going to get to him. He's not going to get to me. So the game's basically end like this. I think he had one wound left on his captain on the Pegasus. He lands in the ruins. If he had rolled, I think, a one or a two, he would have died, but he doesn't, so his captain stays alive. Uh, again, I get no points for it under ATC rules because that's the way they are, so I'm not getting any points for the captain on the Pegasus, and no points for the two level ones, no point for the other wizard, or the Arc Lector, or the War Altar. <laughs> I mean, um, also, um, also, on his turn, he shoots some cannon shot sideways or something where it destroys my two chariots. My spotter, I have no idea how he could take an angle like that and do it, but apparently it can. So, um, that's going to end the game. It's a non game. It wasn't any fun at all. Uh, there was no need for me to go to his machine guns, no need for him to come at me. There was nothing in the rules trying to make you come towards each other because I'm going to see right now. I think in ETC, it's all about draws, all about not fighting. People might not agree with that, but that's just the way I see it. So yeah, I mean, this wasn't a fun game. I could tell he wasn't having fun. I wasn't having fun. I maybe if there was different roles, it'd have been a different outcome. So when it's added up, this could be 11 to 9 in favor of the Empire. Uh, he gets some points, you know, killing those chariots and the gigantic spider at the end. I leave a bunch of points on the table because again, I, I know I'm harping on. I just I do not like ETC at all, and it's not that I don't think it's balanced. It's just it's just not fun. It's, and I think when you're talking about Age of Sigmar not being balanced, and ETC being balanced, but neither one are fun. I think you have to have a happy medium in between, and I thought Swedish is more like that. I thought you know Brawler's Bash is Brawler Bash is more like that. 
I mean, I don't think you can play 8th out of the box and be completely fair, but I don't think it takes much to make it fair. But I think ETC goes more towards 7th and tries to make it more of a different game. And I completely agree that it's balanced. It just, I think, the way the rules are set up, it favors non-games a little bit too much. I mean, that's just my opinion. And you're going to see draw after draw here. <laughs> I think it just favors the people to try to go for draws and not to try to go each other's throats. And you know, maybe in a regular game, I probably wouldn't have wanted to march towards that guy anyway with all those all the guns he had. But maybe under Brawler Bash or something, at least I would have got points for half points things that I might have not cared about what I lost when I marched across the table. Because I was like, well, I won't care if I lose my savages as long as I kill stuff for him to get points for myself. And in a regular game, under Swedish, you know, his comp might have been different. My comp would have been different. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a long time in between battle reports. I think I just feel dour right now from the way everything's panned out with Age of Sigmar. Last year, this time, I was so excited for a new edition. Now, I'm just so bummed out. Anyway, I found Game 3 is also going to be against Empire. I hope I have it out in a timely manner. Thank you guys for listening, and I'll talk to you next time.